Hey guys, today we're going to cover how to teach your dog to come back when you call them. So there's two things that are essential when you teach a good recall. The first one is you have to have a long line. So you can have a five meter long line or a 10 meter one. I really suggest starting with a five meter one. Super important, you cannot do this training without a long line or a retractable. So um, because Charlie is so small, I prefer using a retractable leash because it's really heavy for him to drag a lead like this, uh, especially when it gets wet. And a flexi lead isn't necessarily bad if you know how to use it. I know it's a lot of controversy about these leads, but if you know what to do with them, they are fine. And the other thing you really need is good treats don't come with the boring shit sorry guys but your dog is not going to come back from chasing a rabbit just because you're going to give him a cuddle <laughs> yeah like that works inside the house or when it's boring but if you want your dog to come back there needs to be something in return for it right it's like you have to stop doing something you really love for no reason yeah that's just not gonna happen you gotta pay your dog you gotta pay them well so uh, a lot of people will try dry stuff like dehydrated liver um, or just like biscuits or cookies or whatever it is i find that those don't work well because they, they're not smelly enough and they take too long to chew we want something that you can just feed and bam next yeah so i used chicken sausages jolly yeah because we loved it so those are the first things you need a good leash good treats all right the first step when you start with recall is don't pick a location that is really hard you want to start this maybe in your backyard or actually in your house first and then move to the front and then go to different places so where i am now yeah we're going to start here on the concrete because it's easiest and then i'll show you we're going to move to the field. I'm not starting at the field because I know there's a bunch of rabbits in there, right? So I'm instantly adding so much distraction that the dog is most likely going to fail. So I'm starting here where it's easy and we can have a good game, right? So location. Next, I want to teach my dog a touch command. Um, I don't do that with every dog, but I found with Charlie it's worked really well. So all I'm going to do is yes, put my hand out. And if he touches my hand, I mark with yes, because he knows what yes means. And then I do it again. Touch. Yes. Good boy. Step back a few steps. Touch. Yes. Good boy. Keep moving around a little bit. Charlie. Touch. Yes. But doing that, I teach him that coming into me, I don't mind him jumping on me at the moment because I want him close to me, is that itch means come to my hand as close as possible. Sometimes I find that dogs actually respond better to touch than come, right? Because touch gives them a very clear, I need to come and touch mom's hand or dad's hand. Okay, so that's the touch command. Then, super important, is your own energy if i'm just going to stand here stiff as a board the dog is going to be bored and probably not recall let's see if i can get charlie away from me for a minute come on charles charlie come oh we've done too much training good boy buddy <laughs> I was going to show you that that didn't really like it doesn't really look appealing like eventually it does show you that it works Charlie come oh my gosh you're a very good boy today usually when I do this the dog just ignores me because he's got better stuff to do maybe I'll show you in the field later on right but having a bit of movement and body language that is inviting is really important so for example i'll move him forward and go Chubby. see he comes with a lot of eagerness because my voice went up and i'm moving backwards 
the moment I move backwards, he wants to follow me because dogs love chasing. They love chasing. So why don't we use that to our advantage and let them chase us a little bit. I'm not saying you have to do this every time you call your dog, but we're teaching something new and we want them to have fun with us, right? Because they're chasing a rabbit maybe, but how about come chase me instead? Because you'll get an extra reward out of it. See? I didn't even say anything. Good job, buddy. Nice work. Well done. All right. Now, because he's a little bit glued to me, I'm going to see if I can toss a treat. Good. Nice work. And I like to treat the dog right in front of my legs. Here. Yeah, if you have a taller dog, you put it here. <laughs> because what I want for the dog is to come back to me. All the way. Not halfway. I don't want you to run past me. Additional bonus of teaching your dog to sit right in front of you is that I can then grab his collar if I need to, put the collar back on. Something like that, right? Okay, so I'm going to do it again. So he's a bit glued to me because I have the good treats. So I'm going to toss the treat. Good boy. And here you see how important it is to have that long line or retractable lead because I don't trust him off lead yet. And if I let him off lead now and he doesn't come, he learns that running away is actually really fun because I get to do whatever I want and she can't do anything about it. Good boy. And if you've watched any of my other videos of Charlie, you know that when we just started training, he didn't take food. He had zero interest of being with me. Everything that he wanted to do was sniffing or doing anything that had no relation with me or his owners. So his engagement isn't just, oh, this is a dog that wants to work for me. Like we worked really hard on that. Oh, I dropped one. All right, I'm gonna just show you how to teach the front finish with your dog, what you need is a few treats and you can even practice this on a nice short lead. You don't need to go straight to a long line for this one. You're gonna put the treat on their nose like this and you're gonna do a step back. Yes. And a sit is automatic because I'm pulling my hand up, he automatically sits. I don't like to say sit. So I go, Charlie, come. And then I reward with yes and a treat. I don't go, Charlie, come and then sit because then I'm rewarding the sit, and good job, bud, and not the come, yeah? So just a little side note for you there. So again, for front finish, so he comes right into my legs. I step back, yes, good. Step back, yes, good. Good boy, buddy, nice work. All right, so we keep practicing up front, I'll show you from the side on. Yes. Do one more. Oh, my sunnies fell off. Yep. There we go. Obviously, as he gets better at it, we're going to reduce the amount of treats that we're using. At the moment, you want to use lots of treats at the beginning to really make sure your dog gets it and realizes, hey, this is a fun game and it's worth it. All right. Now we're in the field. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to let him get distracted with the grass. I might do a little bit of recap of my front finish and see if he's still just as interested as he was on the concrete. Probably not. Charlie, oh, you're weeing. Sorry, buddy. Charlie, come. Good boy. Grass is super wet. Doesn't help. Walk around. Try to see if he can get distracted. Charlie. So see how he's now not coming? What I do is I lock my leash and I pull him in. Charlie, come. I use my leash, yes, to reel him in, right? And that's really important that you don't just let the dog not come. If the dog decides to not come, that's what your long leash is for. You're going to reel them in like a fish. 
I only call once and maybe I'll repeat it twice and then the leash comes in. Because not listening is not an option. After you've repeated this quite a few times on grass, with just a few reps where you walk back and forth, where you go jelly, where you go like this, boop, boop. you then are going to just walk your dog. Yeah, I feel like if you start walking and you wait for your dog to naturally get distracted by something, those are good moments to call your dog, like right now. Charlie! And I use a little tug there to make him realize, hey, I called you. I made an extra little sound that he found interesting just to help him out. So what I'm going to do, I'll probably speed this end up because it'll be boring to watch. So I'm just going to walk around through the field. And every now and then I'm going to call him to me whenever he is sidetracked with something. There's a dead rabbit there. That's why he keeps going. Charlie! Go! Good boy! All right. So one thing that is really, really valuable when you work with your dog is rewarding natural check-ins. So yes, just like this. So see how I didn't say anything? He was off doing his own thing. Then he came to me, he made eye contact. So that was him checking in with me, which I really, really like because that's him remembering, hey, we're out on this walk together. So I reward those moments very often. When you get to a point where you're like, hey, I think my dog is doing really well. What's the next step? This is the next one. So as you can see, I just swapped Charlie from the flexible, the retractable lead to the um, normal one. The reason for that is because I feel like, hey, his recall is doing really well. I am going to drop the lead. So now when I call him, I'm not physically holding him. But if he decides to not respond, I have five meters to catch him. So that's like, look how tiny he is. Trying to just catch a tiny dog like him when he's on the run is gonna be near impossible. But I can probably tackle a five meter leash. All right. <laughs> um, so I haven't actually done this with him at all yet. Um, so we'll see how he goes. So as you can see, I moved back to the concrete because I'm introducing a new thing. Yeah, I'm introducing a new skill, it requires different trust. So I'm reducing the amount of distractions because I'm setting myself up for success. Charlie, Charlie, go. Cool, so he failed. Pick up the lead, reel him in. Charlie, come. Good job. Nice work, buddy. All right, and after that, just drop the lead again, let him do his thing. He can, like, again, right, this leash is really heavy for a small dog like him. So it's not as ideal, especially if it gets wet. Now he doesn't want to walk away from me, so I'm going to cross the tree. I'll walk off a bit. Jolly! Come! Come, buddy! Yay! Good job! Yeah, and this is how you build trust and security in your dog and in yourself knowing that you can handle the situation and from here i then move to a shorter leash so instead of a long line i just put normal leash on so i still have like a meter tab or something and then i'm going to let my dog off in a field that we have practiced like i'm not going to go from the super quiet environment that we are now to the busiest beach in the in the area, right? Because then I know 100% for sure he's going to fail. So what I might do instead is next time that I'm here, I'm bringing my dogs and I'm gonna let my dogs loose on the field and those are his distractions. Like, okay, cool, I can play around with this. Now, obviously you might not have two extra dogs to work with because you're not a dog trainer, but I rewarded that natural um, check-in but you might be having a dog park a fence dog park near you you don't go 
in the fence dog park, but you work on the outside. It's really, really handy, super beneficial to teach recall of dogs, is that you use the dog park to your advantage by going alongside it. So the dogs can't reach you, and uh, you can still practice with distractions. Shelly, come on! Yes, good job! Well done! All right, how do we add distractions to our recall training? I love to use food, um, but you can also add toys or cats or dogs or whatever it is, but I just start with food because it's going to be much easier. So what I'm going to do, I've got my bunch of treats here. What I'm going to do is we're going to add a food distraction. So I'm putting it here, the food. See how interested he is? Now, I have tension on the lead. Charlie, come. So he comes off, good. Then I'm going to walk, let him walk towards it again. Then I go, Charlie, Charlie, come. And I have to reel him in at the moment because he's like, oh my God, I want to eat that. So my aim is that I can walk him at that and he comes back, Charlie, come. Without me having to tug. As long as that I have to tug on the lead, it means he can't handle that distraction yet. Charlie, come. Good. Still a little bit of tension there because the reason why there needs to be no tension on the lead is that when the dog is off leash, you have nothing to pull, right? So if that's a person having a picnic or it's a chicken bone or it's something else that your dog shouldn't be eating, then you can't call them off. Yeah, and I'm going to repeat that with those treats until he can call off it without a lead. Charlie, come! And then I'm going to change what's on the ground. So now it's chicken sausage. Maybe I have leftover steak from dinner that no one's going to eat. Or I can put his favorite treats on there. Or a brand new squeaker toy or a ball. Or I could sit on the ground. Well, I can't when I'm just training him by myself. But sitting on the ground is really tempting for dogs so those you can practice this before you go to the beach where the people are sitting on the on the sand eating food there's lots of stuff going on right again we don't want to throw the dog in the deep end and we want to prepare them for as many things as we can charlie come all right so to summarize first we want to teach a touch yeah so charlie Touch. Touch. We also want to teach a dog a front finish recall. He definitely smelled something. So I go, Charlie. Yeah. So he stops right here at the front. We want to be using a long line. We want to start in a really quiet environment before we go to a busier environment. Then we're going to start dropping the leash. And when he's good with that, we're going to add new distractions every time with the leash back on, yeah? Um, and then you might start to become ready for actual off-leash adventures. This takes a long time to practice. This isn't going to be done in one week's time. Your dog is gonna make mistakes. You're gonna make mistakes. It's all part of the learning process. I hope this video was helpful. I'd love to hear in the comments. Please hit subscribe and like, and I'll see you next time.